I'm going through the morning ritual. checking the belt. I married my mechanic. Alright, we're fixing to take off here and uh, this has just been an excellent, excellent anchorage. Quiet. We've got a no-wake zone right here and uh, just right off the lip here, you don't want to get too far in, but right around from the official anchorage it's just a, a little lip here where you can get in nine feet of water and it's been great for an east wind. Tell them if they didn't beat us out again, there goes the Chesapeake. And our span past the Chesapeake there is uh, Ormond Beach coming up. Leaving Daytona Beach. Everybody else is coming north. Yeah. Going through the bridge at Ormond Beach. There was a room up above the hangar at the airport. The old World War II is a wood, uh, one of the wood hangars. It's no longer there. I used to live in here in that little building. Had, had a free little apartment in there for. Uh, Pumping gas and being the mechanic and that kind of thing. I was a complete aviation fiend while I was going through uh, college. That's how I got through. And while I was there, I uh, met a fellow named John Boggs. He'd been a P-40 instructor. That's the same type of plane that the Flying Tigers flew in China. And he was in charge of a project actually owned by Embry Riddle where I went to school called Twin Cat. They were developing a twin engine Ag Cat, twin uh, Lycoming 540s in place of the old radial. So if, uh, if your engine quit, you didn't automatically go down. I later, later crop dusted, and uh, I can tell you when that engine quits, you're on a run. It's going to land somewhere, just a question of where, and usually immediately. But uh, Jack Hunt was the president of Embry Riddle at the time, and uh, when he died, of course, all that, that project uh, died with, with it. But John Boggs had been a P-40 instructor and uh, he was at Clark Air Base on the day that uh, the war started and got lucky and got to fly one of the airplanes out so he wasn't captured by the Japanese. And later on he was uh, shot down twice, once in an A-20, once in a B-25. And the B-25, he went down on the headhunter side of uh, New Guinea and he was uh, there for eight months with the natives he said they had fish every day pigs running all around but they uh, worshiped the pigs so he couldn't you didn't dare kill one of them so take you all the way around the lagoon speaking of the flying tigers uh, General Chenault was the leader of that group. And um, my uncle Elton was always a real big kid, but he was too young to get into World War II at the time. He was 16. And uh, he ran away from home. He was out there in Louisiana. And a big Chrysler Imperial rolled up. And he said, uh, the door came open. He said, where are you going, son? He said, I'm going out to California and join the Navy. He said, well, what, why don't you, uh, you just join me and 
drive me out there you can be my driver and that was uh that was general chenault he had the perfect uh cover and he went out there the he was too young of course but the uh, merchant marine took him and he was a cook on one of the liberty ships And we get uh, spoil islands again, channel tightens up quite a bit. The Tomoka Basin ceremonial mounds and all kinds of things out here. But uh, this is excellent fishing if you got the dinghy. World class red fishing trout right in here. Looks remarkably like one of the tugs my uh, grandpa was on in the YouTube movie. We're doing a one whistle pass. We're taking him on his starboard side. He's requested we just maintain our speed, don't do anything different. He's got his diesel jerry cans, his Honda generator. Back in the distance here, there's the uh, bridge at Ormond. Now that green uh, bulb over there, that's the water tower at Flagler Beach, coming up on the bridge. LV Knox Road, oh, here they come, unreal. Another super bridge, and this is a, this is a high one, so we got over 64 feet here today. Your entrance to the cement plant anchorage. We're getting close to uh, St. Augustine. This is Coquina rock, uh, compressed rock made out of shells. And uh, the Spaniards built their forts out of this material. Box cut. Uh, Matanzas Inlet, 1565, Pedro Menendez de Aviles caught the French commander Jean Revolt who come in uh, down here. He was going to come in behind and land an army and go up to St. Augustine and attack it. Unfortunately, he ran into a front and wrecked his four ship fleet down here and uh, as they were attempting to walk back to Fort Caroline in Jacksonville that he'd established, Menendez caught him there and uh, one by one had him rode over that small cut there, marched behind the dunes and beheaded and that was that. Through the tree line here you can see Fort Matanzas on Rattlesnake Island that's opposite the inlet. In 1740 to uh, 42 Spain began uh, building a series of forts out of the Coquina rock, which is compressed shell. And they lasted roughly uh, 150 years or so until the invention of uh, rifled cannons, which made them instantly obsolete. But for cannon shot, they were the ideal thing because uh, a cannonball would punch into that rock and it just kind of fold around it, absorb the shock and you're completely safe in one of those structures. Now they built this fort here. Uh, the site files at treasuresites.com has some aerials of it. There's big rings on it that uh, they tie their ships up to to supply the garrison. And they built them uh, Fort Piccolata over near Palatka, and there was one uh, just up from that, which was the fording site across the St. John's. 
Now this is the northern entrance. Now you can uh, pick up the info on the Piccolata forts. They were still standing at the time William Bartram wrote uh, William Bartram's Travels. And he did the same trip we're doing and much more. Went up to St. John's, etc. Uh, in a sailing dinghy. And was responsible for what much of the information that was known about Florida at the time at the area in low tide so be prepared coming up is the uh, Crescent Beach Bridge 23 feet now they're catching sheep's head down below that those off of those pilings all right we're uh, coming on into uh, St. Augustine here bridge of Lions will go under. I'm just swinging around so you can see the, the whole bit. There's a anchorage point out here. Our friends on the Chesapeake are right in, right in there. The channel's kind of Turny, tricky, going through here. We're going to swing around and head through the high spans. Looks like we got 68 feet as we're going through. If you ever wondered what a galleon looked like in relation to uh, boats of our day, there you go. Now, of course, the Spanish called them naios, which is simply ship, supply ship. If it was carrying the king's treasure, then it was a galleon. And the uh, treasure fleets were so important to Spain, there were two of them usually go a year, that uh, if they didn't arrive, they got wiped out in a hurricane or what have you, all of Europe would go into a, a depression. That's how important the golden... Uh, especially the silver they were bringing back. That's how important that was. We're going to come around the, go right under the Bridge of Lions, and there's the uh, Castillo de San Marcos, Castle of San Marcos. I believe he was the king in 1565. Every king's got to have his castle. You know how that goes. Built out of Coquina Rock. And there's uh, there's still some cannonballs in it from Og Oglethorpe's attack, I believe, if I remember right. In uh, American ownership, one of the things the fort was used for was to house prisoners, among them Chief Osceola in the Seminole Indian Wars. And uh, the guards thought he was just starving himself to death. But actually what he was doing, he, was, he saw a crack in the, in the cell. And he starved himself to the point he could get out and escape. And there's the St. Augustine Inlet. A treacherous inlet. Especially for the ships of the day. And your last green is this close to the inlet. It's right on it. We're going to flip right around. And there's our entrance right on the other side. Well, there goes uh, Blackbeard. You know, never know who you're going to meet around this place. And uh, we've swung around under the bridge. Doing good. Alright, he's moving. Both 
camped out south side of Pine Island, which is an anchorage that's in all the guidebooks. Yep, marker 25. 